Hello, everybody. This is Gerald Salenti, and it's Thursday, January 18th, 2024. And here are some of today's trends in the news. And remember, the trend is your friend. And we're the only ones in the world, anywhere, any place, giving you the current events forming future trends. What in the world is going on? What's next? And what you might want to do. Again, we don't tell you what to do. We give you our trends analysis and trend forecasts. But think for yourself. And that's the cover of your new trends journal that just went out this week. U.S. drowning in debt. Yep. And now it's coming about. And everybody's starting to talk about it. Record real estate debt set to come due. No, oh, this was in... Uh, Yesterday's Wall Street Journal. Oh, kind of old news. We've been warning about the commercial real estate crisis for how long now? Oh, when they started the COVID war, forced people to close down their <laughs> businesses and got to work from home. Oh, yeah, it did great damage. Yeah, the office occupancy rate is uh, only about 50%. And office vacancy rate is 20%. So record real estate debt set to come due. Commercial sector expected to reach a peak of 602 billion. Yep. And then the markets. Today, you know, the markets went up, they've been down, up and down. You know, none of this means anything right now. This this is a uh, Macy's just announced they're going to close about five stores fire about almost 2500 people. And the Google one after another firing, 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 but everything's fine. Everything's okay. Don't worry about it. You know, things are just going to be okay. The, the whole game is rigged, number one. And again, when you got a clown, like a clown show with the banksters in charge and J.P. Morgan Chase get getting convicted and admitting to five felonies, among them rigging the precious metals market, you got to be a fucking moron do not believe the fucking game is rigged. Oh, by the way, Oxfam came out with a report. You know, they do this every time Davos has their meeting, the Davos gang. 1% own 43% of the financial assets in the world. In the world. Yeah. It's, you're fucking right, it's rigged. China's economy grew 5.2%. It was, you know, came out a couple of days ago. In 2023, yep. Uh, Chinese economy, they're going to try to pump in manufacturing to bring it back up. They're going to go after the uh, after the high tech sector more and more, more and more into solar, this and that. And that's what they're going to hope is going to bring up their economy. But it's not going to happen. They're the ones that started the COVID war on Chinese Lunar New Year, the year the rat. 2020. In three years of zero COVID policy. Fucking bullshit made up by scumbags. That American force in the first country to do it. I just did an interview with an Italian station. It was that guy Conti. I think they spelt it wrong. You got to put a U in there and take out the O. Because that's all he is. The average age of the people dying from COVID in Italy was 81 years old. Anyway. So the whole, the whole world got fucked up with this COVID. No one's talking about it. it. Now it's normal to see people walking around with masks, okay? That don't work. Oh, you don't believe me? You still got the box over here. Let me get this box. Yeah. Face mask box that you see all the fucking shitheads wearing. See it? Yep, here it is. These masks do not... Eliminate exposure to the risk of any disease or infection. That's right. Now, everybody walking around with them now. Not everybody. A lot of people. And don't forget, sanitize your hands. Every time you jerk off, make sure you sanitize your hands before you jerk off. Uh, because I'm a fucking jerk off scumbag little prick Fauci. Again, I held freedom rallies. I didn't swallow the shit. And boy, I'm the most hated, one of the most hated guys up here by the scumbags because I fight for freedom. But anyway, moving on. 
The eye-popping interest payments spike on our national debt. Combined net worth of nation's most prominent billionaires would cover a single year's interest. This is from the Daily Wire. You ready? <laughs> uh, blah, blah, blah. The United States collected $4.4 trillion in federal taxes in fiscal 2023, up here from $4.19 trillion in fiscal 2022. Yet the debt increased by more than $2 trillion. Taxes, stealing our fucking money. Taxes, robbing your fucking blind to give you back shit so the scumbag bureaucrats could have their jobs and these fucked up pricks. And I can't say the other word. Politicians never have a work a day in their life. And that's why you want to get our shirt. Hey, politicians, who the fuck are you to tell me what to do? Look at the fucking taxes and look at the back of it. Yeah. So you go to trendsjournal.com and you've got the shop list over there. Yeah, it's just right here. The debt interest payments continue to spike in October 23, 2023, the first month of fiscal year 2024, when the government paid $76 billion on national debt. The figure marked a shocking 77% increase from October 2020. All right, go back to your cover of your Trends Journal. We write about this, they report on it. And it's U.S. drowning in debt, the nation is sinking. You got it. Corporate defaults surge as Moody's points to more pain ahead. This is from today's Financial Times. No fucking shit. How long have we been warning about this? How long? But they don't put our stuff up there because I'm not a prostitute. I'm not a media whore. You can't pay me to put out like a little, I'm, I'm Anderson Cooper. My mommy was Gloria Vanderbilt. Yeah, and I'm still Gloria. China's, you know, the China thing is now. here. Oxfam report: the devastating indictment of monopoly power and inequality. Runaway corporate, corporate and monopoly power. This is the guy from from um, Oxfam. Is an inequality generating machine through squeeze through squeezing workers, dodging tax, privatizing the state, corporations are funneling endless wealth to their ultra-rich owners. They're also funneling power, undermining democracies and our rights. You got it. Well, you got to look at as Davos. And then again, the bigs keep getting bigger. Burger King parent buys big franchise for $1 billion. TPG to buy supply chain risk firm. Synopsis pays $35 billion deal to buy ANSYS, A-N-S-Y-S. It's all there. Sinclair Network chair buys Baltimore Sun. Yeah, the big chains on all the media. Five corporations control over 90% of the American media. Thanks to that fucking scumbag, murderous prick, Bill Clinton, who deregulated the Federal Communications Act in 1996. And then on to the Israel war. Oh, by the way, gold went up a little bit today. Bitcoin's down a bit. But, you know, again, everything is in a flat zone right now. It, this, is, this is a watch and see time. Nobody could tell what's going to happen. Because Prime Minister Netanyahu on Thursday, today, rejected calls to scale back Israeli military offensive in Gaza to keep slaughtering people. I have nightmares about this. I have nightmares. Could you imagine living there? Yeah. Everything being bombed to ruins, your families being wiped out, friends, devastation, no food, no medicine. Where's the outrage? Where's the outrage? We obviously see it differently. 
National Security Spokesman John Kirby. So what a freaky look of fuck he is, that guy. Yeah, we see it differently, but we'll keep supplying Israel with the weapons to keep slaughtering the people, all right? We'll bullshit to say we don't like it as America keeps sending them the weapons to slaughter the Palestinians. Like that scumbag blinking. Oh, this is terrible, he says it. At, at, at the Davos. Oh, it's, it's so sad. As, as he pushed through $110 million to, uh, it would be beyond, be, without Congress having anything to do with it, to send more weapons of death. And fuck off when you tell me I'm anti-Jewish or an anti-Semite. I'm anti-slaughter of innocent people, you scumbags who say that about me. And I'm not anti-American because I hate Americans' wars. So go fuck off or go fight. Go over there and fight. Go, go kill, go kill little kids. They're ramping up the war over there, slaughtering more people in the West Bank. West Bank, stolen fucking land. Oh no, they're settlements. God gave us this land. You know, fuck you. IDF withdraws from West Bank amid abuse violence by Haredi Jews. This is important. This is from Jerusalem Post. I guess these guys, they must be anti-Semites. They're anti-Zionists. The IDF withdrew security forces from the ultra-Orthodox West Bank city of Modi Ili, following several physical and verbal altercations with Haredi extremists in the city, Army Radio reported. Israeli forces, blah, 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 blah. So the, uh, this sect is opposed to Zionism and any cooperation with the state of Israel and its institutions, believing that the establishment of the state of Israel is a rebellion against the nations of the world They're 100% correct. Oh, but you didn't shoot and kill them like you do uh, the Palestinians, the protest. Ben and Jerry's urges end to fighting in Gaza. Bravo. Good for them. They're one of the very, very few. And of course, they were attacked by it for doing it. Iran warns U.S. not to tie their destiny to the fate of Israel's Netanyahu. This is from uh, CNBC. They go on to say that um, Iran wants to stop the war in Gaza. Uh, this guy said, stressing that security in the Red Sea is important to its country. He sought to deny claims that the Islamic Republic is aiding Yemen because that's the only time they ever say it. Anytime they mention Yemen, they say that Iran is behind them. But when you say Israel, you don't say the uh, <laughs> American-supported IDF. No, but when you always hear Iranian-backed Houthis. He said, the people of Yemen and other countries in the region who defend the Palestinian people are acting according to their own experience and through their own interests, and they are not receiving any orders or instructions from us, meaning Iran. So there you got it. But that's not hardly reported, and this is... Um, this guy who's the uh, Iran's foreign minister. And he talk, told us to, uh, to uh, CNBC. We believe that the action to destabilize the region is rooted in Israel and its genocide in Gaza. Yep. It goes on. We'll write about it in detail in your Trends Journal. This is an article in the in the toilet paper record. Six dollars to get the Sunday Times, by the way. You get nothing from it. Stupid bullshit. Russia sows instability. Davos Forum is cautioned. And they go on to say here, they're quoting Zelensky. I don't believe Putin is capable of changing. Only humans can do that. Uh, so Putin is not human. Zelensky, who plays the piano with his penis, he's human. 
Clint, and then they have the, they came out with a peace formula. They call this a peace formula. How about calling it? <laughs> the plan calls for full Russian withdrawal from all Ukrainian territory, including Crimea. Oh yeah, that's going to happen. Oh, that, that will happen right away. Peace formula. Who the fuck are you talking to? We're talking to the fucking morons out there that swallow shit. All right. Take it easy, Salenti. They say that the war in Ukraine has been a notable but not dominant topic, meaning it's coming to the end. And then they had this Sasha Ustinova, a member of the Ukrainian parliament, who spoke at a bipartisan gathering of American members of Congress on Monday, saying, quote, Ukraine will not make it without the support of the world and especially the United States. Hey, I'm an American. I don't want my money going over there. And by the way, in your Trends Journal, wrote about the United States overthrow of the democratically elected government of Viktor Yanukovych in 2014 in detail and on and on and on and on and what caused Russia to invade. Again, totally opposed to the invasion. Totally understand why it happened. She goes on to say, you ready for this? This is why this is the toilet paper record. No comments other than what they want to put in there. I just want everyone to be honest with you. I just want to be honest with you, <laughs> right? Honest with you. Then she begins to lie. I think everyone thinks Ukraine is winning. Everyone thinks Ukraine is winning. Who are you talking to? Nobody thinks Ukraine is winning. Hey, your counteroffensive failed. It was one of the covers of your Trends Journal. We said, don't count on the counteroffensive. Said Russia was not going to lose before the war even started. But we all think Russia is losing and Ukraine is winning. And then we got this um, more stuff. NATO has five years to prepare for war with Russia. Estonia believes NATO has three to five years to prepare for possible direct confrontation with Russia. Prime Minister Kaja Kalas told the Times on, oh yeah, if only women were in charge. Yeah, let another warmonger telling to build more weapons. You're like, Estonia is going to defeat. <laughs> anyway, what Russia wants is a pause is to gather its resources and strengthen weakness, provoke aggressing. Blah, 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 blah. God, that's bullshit. And um, talking about the uh, Davos gang, the, that President uh, Ursula von der Leyen, or Lyon, L Y I N G, Lyon, yeah. Little, another little warmongering freak. This is the number one, the number one threat, the number one threat that Davos states is misinformation. Quote, for the global business community, or the global business community, the, oh, that's the only people that count. Okay. The top concern for the next two years is not climate or conflict. It's disinformation and misinformation. Yep. There you got it. That's it. That's the greatest threat. Well, for the collaboration between government and corporations in this fight against industrial scale disinformation that imperils establishments' official narratives. So, you're only supposed to believe the authorities. You are only allowed to swallow our shit? You are not allowed to think for yourself? We kill people all over the world? In the name of freedom and democracy? Misinformation. Who the fuck are you talking to? Oh, we're talking to the gang that runs the world. 
All we are are plantation workers of slave land here. Nothing more. You read about this. It is totally, totally disgusting. I read the whole thing from page to page of what she talked about. And then that uh, other little warmongering freak that doesn't fight but loves to loves wars, little Anthony Blinken, my daddy was ambassador to Hungary. My uncle was ambassador to Belgium. I went to Dalton. I went to Harvard. I'm a member of the club and you're just shit. You ready for this at Davos? World wants more U.S. intervention. And engagement more than ever. There's a great premium. There is a greater premium than there's ever been in our engagement on our leadership in partnership with others. Leadership? How about losership? Who the fuck is America to lead anybody? Our country is rotting in front of us. It's a fucking pig show. It's a infrastructure rotting in front of us. Homeless everywhere. Migrants filling up the street. Leader? Yeah, follow your leader. We're the Davos gang. I'm hearing from virtual every country, they want the United States. They want us present. They want us at the table. They want us leading. Who the fuck are you talking to? Who the fuck are you talking to? You are an anti-American. Hey, scumbag, why don't you read what George Washington, a real man, not like you and these other little boys and girls that can't fight their way out of a paper bag. Guy, Washington across Delaware, yeah. I remember that Perry Cuomo song. And what did Delaware? She wore a brand new jersey. No, no, that's a... Anyway, he tells the American people not to get involved in any foreign entanglements. Have no love for a country and no hate for a nation. Because if you do, you will be a slave to them. And that's what we are. Plantation workers of Slavelandia. So thanks for tuning in, and don't forget to watch the interview that I did with Judge Napolitano yesterday. It's a great one. So thank you very much, and support the Trends Journal. We're supporting you. Remember, hit that like button, whatever it is, you know, to, to get, you know, to make you, so you know that when we're going on the air, you know, that that goes, the little thing that you hit there to, to uh, make sure that, you're getting the message of our podcast. So thanks for tuning in. At the Trans Journal, the best investment you could make because it's the best investment into your mind and it can change how you look at the world. His work is actually a gold mine. Anybody interested in politics, political trends, economic trends, social trends, cultural trends, you have to follow him, Gerald Salente. The Trends Journal is one of the greatest sources of information, and it's uh, and it really is. You're predicting these things well ahead of time. I would encourage everyone to go grab the latest copy. Been a Trends a Journal subscriber for 20 years. I just have to commend you. What you guys have put together in your latest Trends Journal, there's nothing like this out there. So everything that you predicted about the economy, you are absolutely right. So I, I, I have followed you all this time. So please take a look at the Trends Journal. You correctly forecast that the Fed would hike rates quite aggressively. Correctly said that initially gold and silver would drop as the Fed starts to raise rates to one and a half percent and above. So when we spoke last, Bitcoin was around 49,000. You said you expect to drop and if it drops below 30, 35, then it could really drop. Trends Journal, which I would encourage people to go and check out. It's actually a 200 page document, pure data driven analysis. Gerald Salenti, the top trends forecaster in the world. Gerald, you had an interesting call back in September of last year. You said gold had bottomed, which is exactly what happened. And here we are and we're above $1,900. Subscribe to the Trends Journal.
Read history before it happened at trendsjournal.com.